Hi everyone, David Looms here. Um, thanks for joining me for another of these videos. I've got a couple of new things on the mill at the moment that I'd quite like to show you. Uh, one of them you may have spotted already, just behind me. There's an Android tablet sitting here. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. But, <coughs> but the real thing I want to show off, shall we say, is um, my attempt at making a somewhat smarter coolant system. Let me turn the camera around, point at the mill, and we'll zoom in on it. There you go, that thing there is similar to Tormach's uh, Smart Cool, I suppose, but it's two channel. Um, and if I start on the, the tablet, um, I can adjust the aim independently of either channel. And there's the second one. Um, I can have them scan, and I can adjust the speed of the scans independently. There you go, there's the second channel scanning. Um, and I can save that setup for a particular tool. Um, I'll do that. Um, I'll do a switch to the file screen and I'll pick some arbitrary tool that I'll actually use. Tool 100 and hit save. If we go back to one that we are going to use, tool 5. Open would look like that. And I can retrieve my tool 100 again, just as I had it set a moment ago. Uh, I'll go back to 5, it's a bit more peaceful. Um, now to do that, all I need is um, a USB phone charger to provide power. There's a little microcontroller around the back of my machine at the moment, perhaps I'll do another video in the future to show that. But it has a BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy um, receiver on it, um, so it's communicating with the tablet. Now, if the only thing I did was to move that USB connector, so instead of being powered from um, a wall-mounted phone charger, it's, con it's plugged into the PathPilot controller, then things get a bit more interesting, because just by going to PathPilot and turning the coolant on and off, I turn the coolant on, and turn the coolant back off again, um, then there's a bit of code sitting in PathPilot that's monitoring what uh, the Linux CNC um, core is doing underneath. It's checking the tool number and the coolant status. And it relays that to the microcontroller, which then applies the appropriate settings for the coolant. Some of you might have seen the uh, code I posted uh, a month or so ago to monitor the spindle when the probe was uh, loaded to make sure that you don't uh, spin up a probe or a hymer. It's basically the same process that's going on here. Um, but it's watching for the tool number and the coolant modes. Once it got that going, it occurred to me there was possibly quite a lot more that I could do. Um, and it turns out it's quite easy to have the um, Android tablet send commands down to the MDI line. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom the camera back out so you can actually see this. Now we've got a better view of my mill. If I go to my tablet, I can switch to pendant page. And you can see here that I can move uh, the x-axis, I can move y, um, I can go up and down in z, obviously. And if you've got a rotary, then a-axis works as well. Um, and in fact, you can do most of the things you would want to do. Um, you know, the usual feed spindle and rapid overrides, uh, zeroing the axes, starting and stopping a program. Um, and then I thought, let's add one of the things that PathPilot doesn't have, and I've always felt it should have, user-defined buttons. On the bottom of my tablet, you can see I've got two rows of eight buttons. These are all user-definable, so the first obvious pair that you want to add, because you get fed up typing this into the MDI, is G54 and G55. So just by, if you long press on one of these buttons, then it pops up at the bottom, and you can see the name for display in the button, and the code be executed when you when you click that button. Uh, I've always found it handy to have a button that moves you immediately to X0, Y0, so just to show you how that works. If I pick G54 and say go to X0, Y0, or I can pick G55, go to X0, Y0, I find that a very useful sanity check, um, especially when you're trying to make two different parts at once. So I've got a part set up here. Um, what I was in the middle of making was uh, a Mark II version of the coolant controller. The Mark I, which is on the machine, has been there for a, a month or two now. 
and it suffers from having some gears that are far too small and too hard to attach to the shafts. So I'm making one that's slightly bigger. So let's go through the process of setting this up. What I need to do here is just roughly set my X and Y zero. Uh, the vertical is already aligned to the base of the vise. So yeah, that's about right. So I'll zero X, zero Y, Go to G30 so that we're definitely clear, and I'll click Cycle Start. Okay, first stage is going to be a probe to set my XY accurately. Let's see if my rough by eye version was good enough. So long as it's within 5mm, this should work. Well, that's not a problem. This part was actually originally done on the uh, on the rotary, so the surface you're looking at is uh, the bit that was basically in the vice jaws, um, so it still has to be tidied up with a conventional T-axis operation, so that's X and Y set. We'll now go to my little face mill. And here comes the coolant. Okay then, we have a couple of different champers to apply to the top. Just using some extra tools for the sake of it, that was a small 4mm uh, spot drill to put a fine chamfer and this is an 8mm version to put a rather heavier chamfer on the other three sides and that's us done Okay, so that's as much as I want to show today. I hope that was uh, of interest. If I get enough uh, comments, um, I'll do a more detailed video and show how the how the parts go together. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.